Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow, and today we're going to deep dive into Apex Fusion's official tokenomics. Now, I am obviously a big fan of Apex Fusion, and before I get any deeper into anything I say in this video, I want to let you know a couple things straight up. I don't own any of the Apex Fusion tokens. I, they haven't given me anything. This is not a paid segment. This is nothing of the sort. This is, um, I mean, how do I explain it? This is a project that I absolutely want to be a part of. I want to get involved. I plan on investing uh, quite heavily, to be quite honest with you, uh, into Apex tokens as soon as I'm as soon as I can. Basically, um, I did have a signed NDA with them because it turns out that the founder happened to be a fan of my channel for many years, and ultimately did very well investing in Cardano over the past couple market cycles. And uh, but 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 really, I, once you once you really get more information on him, he did very very well before any of that. Um, so it's he didn't need my help. Uh, he was already doing very well for himself. Um, but the point is, is that I'm not doing this video because I want everyone to run out and buy Apex Fusion. You can't buy it right now anyway, so it doesn't matter. It hasn't even launched yet. But. Uh, as a as somebody who I, I did get a copy of the light paper before most people uh, under NDA, I wasn't allowed to explain really many or any details uh, as it pertained to Apex Fusion. And so a lot of people were like, you know, Crow's teasing. He's talking about this project, but he won't say anything. And then the light paper came out. And in Apex Fusion's team's efforts of being extremely transparent uh, in the light paper and in the tokenomics, what ultimately seemed to happen is it created some tension and some cynicism and some questions, more questions than it probably answered uh, in, in the release of that document. And a lot of people were kind of on Twitter saying, oh, I don't like these tokenomics. I, this looks terrible. I don't understand. How could this be so bad? And um, and I was looking through and I'm thinking to myself, I don't understand why people are looking at it that way. And I basically responded to a lot of the Twitter uh, FUD, basically, uh, I'm going to wait until the full document rolls out and then we'll go over it in detail. Uh, and before I make any uh, uh, assumptions or decisions or, or what have you, because the reality is, is if I didn't, if, if what I had initially known about the project had changed, um, then I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, that's just all there is to it. And I won't, and I wouldn't be planning on still investing uh, and getting involved as much as I can. Why am I doing that? Because I think this is ultimately what cryptocurrency needs. Um, and, and I think it's, it's basically bridging, physically and figuratively, bridging the gap between a lot of different tribes in crypto and multiple different blockchains for the sole purpose of benefiting the ecosystem and its users overall. And it's doing that in a variety of different new methods, utilizing technology that comes from different blockchains. Uh, and, and there's a lot to it. And that's not what this video is about. We're going to dive into a lot of that in future videos. But today, this is all about apex fusion tokenomics so we're going to dive into it and we're going to dive into it deep so this video may take a while um i am going to chapter this video out uh once i've published it it'll take up a little bit of time because youtube has to create the transcript of everything i say and then the ai system i use to chapter everything out uh will be ran so if you're watching this video you know a day after it goes out it'll, it'll check the comments the pinned comment will have um you know clickable links taking you to any section you're most interested in okay so let's go ahead and do this i've been waiting to do this for a while i wanted to read the full document in full before I did anything. Um, I have read it. I've only highlighted about half of it because quite frankly, once you get towards the second half, um, everything's important. So we're just gonna go into it and we're gonna go deep. So I hope you're ready. Grab a coffee, pull up a chair, kick back, relax, and let me read to you, okay? If you like my voice enough, I don't know, we'll see. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive into this document. 
This is the Apex Fusion Tokenomics published in May this month. It is now May 13th of 2024. Now, we're going to start with my initial highlights into the document because a lot of it is just kind of casual, you know, um, or not, depending on how you look at it. But some things I felt are a little bit more pertinent to the conversation right now. Um, and, and another thing that I actually forgot is I'm going to add this. Give me one memento here. <clears throat> because I think this is important. This, this ladies and gentlemen to my left is the uh, launch partners, okay? These are all of the partners currently announced. There are more apparently, but these are the current launch partners of Apex Fusion. And when you look at this breakdown, and there are many videos which are gonna be linked in the description below, all of their announcement videos as to uh, how it relates to their partnership with Apex Fusion, what their goals are, et cetera. And when you watch these videos and you learn about these partnerships, I want you to keep one thing in mind moving forward. That one thing is how many projects have been invested into that were merely an idea on a white paper and nothing more? How many projects released proper tokenization or tokenomics in a white paper and they actually were transparent and clear and very explanatory as to what the funds were going to do uh, and basically all of the details associated therein? Very few projects do that. Then if you were to compare these tokenomics of Apex Fusion with other projects that have come before it, I don't think it'll take you long to realize that the tokenomics are not only really up to par for industry standards today, are more transparent than the majority of the tokenomics that have released in previous projects on blockchain, layer one or otherwise, but ultimately are better okay in a lot of regard and and i want you to keep in mind when you're looking when we're going through this and it's talking about partnership funds and it's talking about foundations and teams and where a lot of these funds are going you have to understand that this block check or blockchain is already in testnet it's preparing to launch very soon and it already has a master list of pretty high quality development partners to help facilitate the launch of the chain and its multiple use cases. That doesn't happen very often. Typically when you see a project or a new layer one launching, they may have one or two partnerships that they scrounged around to work out some crazy deals at an exorbitant fund allocation to get their involvement so that they can legitimize themselves as a project. This is not the case. And there are so many different variables that separate what Apex Fusion is doing compared to other blockchains that I really want you to pay attention to this video if you've had any doubts or you haven't had the time to deep dive into this new Apex uh, documentation, okay? So I am going to go ahead and pull this off. I just wanted to give you guys and gals an opportunity to screenshot it, has all the URLs right there, and there will be links to all of their individual announcement videos below. So let's dive into this. So one of the first keynotes is staking Apex is crucial for securing the network. Stakers earn rewards for operating nodes, validating transactions, and maintaining integrity. Actions that contribute to the success and development of critical network infrastructure drive higher reputation scores. I want you to keep a lot of these notes in mind as we get, because the first half of this is going to break down little little tidbits like this. And if you want to read the entire document, it's publicly available. You can go do that whenever you want, but I'm going to be highlighting things that I think are really relevant to the argument today as to whether or not the tokenomics for Apex Fusion, as it relates to what was originally released in limited detail, it wasn't even really that limited. I just think people didn't really read the whole thing, which is one of the reasons why I'm doing a lot of this today uh, with the full documentation. This is a 30 page documentation, but don't worry, it's not going to take as long as you think to go through. The token utility, the Apex token serves as the primary token within Apex, the Apex Fusion ecosystem with a myriad of utilities underlining its significance, including, but obviously not limited to currently, access to network infrastructure, transaction fees, 
intrafusion tra chain transfers. I might get tongue tied a few times, folks. You have to bear with me a little bit here. The Apex token plays a crucial role in enabling seamless transfers between the interconnected chains of the fusion ecosystem through the native reactor router. Keep that in mind as we move forward as well. Think about it. You just saw a list of all the different partner chains that this is ultimately planning to launch with, or at least launch just before some other things are announced and, and, and basically use cases are announced. And I anticipate there are going to be many more announcement videos of, of new partnerships coming. Staking rewards, which we all know, and delegation and reputation. The Fusion reputation system will play a key role in stakeholder management and governance. The Apex Fusion Foundation promotes the delegation of Apex tokens to various staking pools, supporting community-centric projects and ensuring ecosystem evolution. Now, what this is doing ultimately before it even gets to that point in the tokenomics de description is explaining a bit about what foundation funds are going to be used for. A lot of people assume foundation is team. That's not this. That's not what this is about. Foundation is ultimately supporting those that are further securing the network. Keep in mind, this is built uh, using the same UTXO model as Cardano. This is not Cardano. This is a separate new layer one blockchain with a lot of different variables associated with its use case and what it's being developed for as opposed to Cardano overall. So this isn't the same blockchain, but they are sharing technology. They're taking some of the best stuff that Cardano brought to blockchain overall and utilizing it with new use cases in mind with new development partners hitting it right out of the gate. But the foundation overall is for a lot of different things, whether that's supporting stake pool operators that are basically launching with the blockchain or wanting to get started so that people aren't uh, launching nodes and, and basically launching empty nodes that are not able to generate anything from, but they're like my, my Cardano node, my Crow node, it cost me several hundred dollars a month to maintain and operate and in a bear market that was kind of a drag because i was paying out a lot more than i was getting in so that's a part of foundation when it comes to the tokenomics here and i want you to keep that in mind as well as other things of course you've got design framework and things like that that's all good recognizing the importance of compliance Apex Fusion will implement stringent policies based on guidance from one of the most reputable Swiss law firms these policies will dictate the deployment of the Genesis block, primary token distribution categories and allocations, the purpose of future distribution, eligibility criteria, KYC requirements, and other legal obligations for participation in token sales. Geographical restrictions may also be imposed to align with regulatory mandates. After the tokens are issued, the foundation, as the network steward responsible for the Genesis block, will adhere to local legal frameworks and meticulously report activities. This strategy ensures compliance while laying the groundwork for a fairer, more inclusive system in the future. Keep in mind, one of the reasons why these documents uh, have been kind of drip fed to the public in phases has been for legal compliance reasons. They're making sure that they're not going too hard, too fast uh, against basically legal consult. And they're making sure that they're crossing their T's, dotting their I's before any document hits the public. That's a pretty big deal, especially when most of us come from a time where basically people would just write out a white paper, throw it on the internet on a website with an Ethereum address, and they'd have a little smart contract that said for every you know one Ethereum, somebody sends to this address give them this much of a token back all basically based on an idea most of the time that were very hollow ideas to begin with but they sounded good on paper we're not doing that kind of stuff anymore not only is it just bad business we've all learned that uh, but also because of the regulatory framework today there are a lot of gray areas and a lot of weird things that have been happening in the regulatory space that make it so that a lot of the more prominent and future looking blockchains are trying to make sure that they're doing everything the right way, not only by their, their investing public, but by the regulatory bodies that like to rule by enforcement today. And those guidelines aren't necessarily there. So everybody's trying to play it super, super safe and make sure that they're doing everything in a very compliant way, not necessarily based off of what the compliance might be today, but where how far they think things may be getting as we continue to move forward into the year and into the next you know five years, okay? Layer one projects, 
that had TGE in the period 2022 and 2024 identified several stakeholder, stakeholder groups with very wide definitions, such as community, ecosystem growth, contributors, and treasury. We're making the following assumptions regarding the stakeholders. Now, what this is, this is balance across various stakeholders. This is basically how the tokenomics pie is described and why they're doing it in the detail they're doing it. And ultimately, the trans transparency of it that people are still getting confused and i think ultimately people were initially confused by the light paper because this was so transparent and broke things down so much that it was easier for people to assert assume that certain elements of the tokenomics meant something that they didn't whether it was because they were using terms that we're not they're not we're not used to seeing we're typically used to seeing like a pie chart with you know four or five pieces in it and it would always make it look as though the majority was going to the community, very small amount was going to the team, so forth and so on. But the reality of a lot of that tokenomics is, is how were those pies further broken up and what was actually what it was, what, what it was being represented as. That was the, the thing. So when, the, when they put a lot of this stuff out, they're trying to do it in a very, very transparent and very compliant way so that people understand exactly where the allocations are going and why and what their overall use is going to be. And I think a lot of people tried to blanket a lot of stuff together to create a, 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 a pie size bigger than it actually was. And that was confusing people and misleading people. And honestly, it did get a lot of people ticked off. But a lot of that was because I just think people didn't understand. And hopefully by the time this video is concluded, a lot of those questions and, and uh, concerns will be go, going gone. Uh, uh, number one, a clear definition of each stakeholder group in token distribution is mandatory. Number two, multiple entities developing protocols or labs offer an advantage compared to a single monolith development company. Basically saying, rather than just have one or two partnerships and the bulk of these token allocations going to just a couple of hands, a lot of these funds are being allocated to a lot of different teams, not just make believe teams, not just teams that they're basically writing down as, well, we're gonna have a lot of, we're gonna have 12, 15, 25 different development partners in the future wink wink hope hope uh but we're going to allocate all of these funds to them and then they have like maybe one or two and then it's more centralized this is basically saying these tokens are being distributed among a vast number of development partners that have all so far been publicly announcing themselves in videos, which you can see in the description below. You know they're legitimate. You know who these team leaders are. Many of these major application, Charlie three, you know, I call it Charlie three, I shouldn't. Charlie, you know, that's just one where, you know, these people are coming out publicly saying, no, we are working with Apex Fusion. This is legitimate. There's a reason for this, people. Number three, technology, community building, and strategic growth require specialized independent groups of experts to deliver in a decentralized way. Basically saying, this is the way we want these things to operate. This is the way we want our development partners to play a role in the development and the further furthering of the blockchain. And, and we want this done in a, in a proper way, not just throwing a bunch of crap to the wall, hope, what, hope something sticks, so forth and so on. Number four, the sustainability of each group can benefit from the primary apex token allocation basically you know each group that gets a token allocation needs to be able to put it to use in some way to benefit the relationship and further the development or the goals that these groups are working on the best results can be achieved when technology builders present one of the main sources of token supply i'm recording this and i'm still being alerted to new subscriptions so that's cool i guess <laughs> a little distracting Sophisticated Web3 Protocol Treasury. The foundation is legally bound to use its funds for its purpose, i.e. develop and foster Apex Fusion and support for the community and ecosystem. In other words, the foundation is in basically able to take the allocations of tokens and dump them on the market. They have to be utilized for what they were allocated for. That's it. And, 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 and th th I, that's great. <laughs> Some of this to me, I'm reading and I'm going through it. And I'm like, this is how things should be folks. Um, but you know, it, it's, people are cynical today, rightfully so I've become so risk averse to, for, to the crypto space, uh, and, in the, in the myriad of, of crap projects all over the place that I just don't touch most of it. As you guys know, 
lockup schedules this is key and this is going to this is going to get much deeper later but token allocations require a clear lockup schedule for each stakeholder group specific categories of contributors may be subject to legal requirements e.g. best practices implies a lockup period between one and three years depending on the investment round and legal frameworks basically saying that everything is being structured to ensure that there aren't groups getting significant allocations to tokens that they are then able to easily turn around and dump on unsuspecting retail investors once things go public. That's what these are all locked up for. Some teams are gonna need funds from their allocations sooner than others. You're gonna have your speculative group, you're gonna have your development group, you're gonna have your foundation groups that are basically trying to help secure the blockchain through uh, node allocations and things like that, ultimately to build the scaffolding relevant to the growth of this layer one blockchain and its partners okay that that that's that that couldn't be simpler to me uh very well designed airdrop mechanisms reward network participation and prevent the abuse of short-term incentives basically the people that buy in at the bottom they try to dump it on the retail public because if it goes public at, at 25 cents or a dollar or whatever the heck it is and you know you've got you know uh, Johnny come early who basically got the token at a fraction of a penny, he's gonna dump it retail. He doesn't care about what the long-term ramifications or potential benefits are of holding this token for six months or a year or two years. They don't care. They wanna get in early. They wanna basically fund some initial operation and then they wanna check out as quickly as they can turn a profit. They don't care. They're not about making significant risk. Uh, number one, transparent unlock schedules. <clears throat> and clear definitions of token allocations, avoiding major cliffs through linear unlock schedules provided to all groups, clear communication and reporting structures for token unlocks and token usage, okay? And then this goes into different risk profiles associated with the different groups that I think are important, but I, don't, I didn't feel it necessary to deep dive into a lot of that um, right now. You've got schedule risk, uh, you know, roll out of the new ecosystem with the critical infrastructures, all that fun stuff. But this was important. Team unlock periods and allocations are usually the most sensitive to project success. Tokenomics need to ensure that core contributors and related parties are properly compensated based on their deliverables, but with the longest and most radical lockup periods compared to other stakeholder groups. This is basically saying that this is all structured to ensure that the team isn't creating a cash grab or some sort of rug pull, that they're basically artificially pumping with everybody's involvement just to cash out early and bail. That's why these things are in place, to ensure that that's not happening. Mitigation of this risk is using systems such as a reputation system and endorsement center to ensure that the foundation fairly and transparently rewards builders based on their deliverables. Deliverables are development mind, not milestones, making sure that if you've got a roadmap plan for development and you're a development partner and you got an allocation for that development, that you're not sitting around on your butt collecting a free check just by name alone. You have to build, you have to come through on your promise, your deliverables, what you set out to accomplish on the blockchain has to be done or you don't get paid. Simple as that. Um, funding ideas and specific activities is different from funding the launch of mature projects or products. The foundations, the foundation needs to have options such as retroactive grants to fund the community's accomplishments after they have been successfully executed. The infusion protocol is just one of several funding protocols designed for a specific purpose. The foundation's clear guidelines for executing projects and get getting required funding with fully transparent processes and deliverables aligned with the technical and ecosystem roadmap mitigate this risk. Now, this ladies and gentlemen, is the token allocation. We're gonna dive into this a bit. We're gonna break things down to be as transparent as possible. There is a fixed total supply of 3 billion Apex tokens allocated as follows. The Venture Fund, 8%. Now, 
This isn't to be confused with venture capitalists. The venture fund is 8% of the 3 billion tokens are being used to help fund new projects on the blockchain. This isn't going into the hands of venture capitalists and early investors. That's not what that means. The venture fund is basically like, um, like Project Catalyst on Cardano. Okay, not exactly. It's obviously a different system, different model and so forth. But this is ultimately like if somebody comes up with a really good idea and can pro and can provide like either an MVP or, or, or whatever. And the Apex Fusion Foundation and the group basically says, yes, we really love to have this on our blockchain. We think it would add transactional volume, on-chain metrics, a lot of things that would help the blockchain grow. Then we'll help fund it through our venture fund. OK, that's not the team is like collecting money or paying out um, hands. The foundation, 27 percent of the total allocation is going to the foundation and the foundation is broken down by the 13.33 percent infusion, which I just went over. OK, a little bit. 6.67% for liquidity, ultimately basically making the token available and providing the liquidity for whether it's DeFi platforms or centralized exchanges. If you want to put your your pro, your token on exchanges, you basically have to provide the initial liquidity for them. They will not buy it from you. You have to provide it. Oftentimes, the exchanges maintain that liquidity, um, or you lock that liquidity into DeFi um, DeFi platforms. Okay. So again, that's not money going to a team member. It's not money going in and being held on so they can dump it on people. That is to build the overall liquidity ecosystem that moves the token through the markets. Operations, this is basically to pay staff and people that are involved. 0.67%, uh, not even one full percent to advisors. Unfortunately, I'm not an advisor. They didn't reach out to me. Uh, <laughs> I would love to have been. Uh, but I'm not an advisor, uh, and uh, there's no talk of me being an advisor, although that would be pretty damn cool, but I don't see that happening. Who knows? Um, I do feel like there's quite a bit I could offer uh, in terms of an advisor role, but anyway. Um, and then 2.33% for just straight up grants. Grants basically saying, <clears throat> you know, we like your idea. We think this will benefit us. Here's the money to develop it. Okay. To me, this is almost just like an extension of the, the venture fund, uh, as, as far as I understand it. You've got labs. 27% is in labs. Labs is broken down by core contributors, teams, operations, early contributors. There's only 3% going to early contributors. <laughs> okay. I don't know why people have lost their minds over some of this. It just doesn't add up to me. You've got airdrops, 8%. So 8% is going to airdrops. Um, and that is a larger sum than the majority of everything else uh, broken down here, uh, which, which is crazy. So you've got 8% in the airdrops. You've got Cardano's wave one. So basically they're working on a 3% allocation to airdrop on Cardano users, apparently. Um, and, and you know, keep in mind, I may get some of these things wrong here or there. Um, and and, and what, what I have read or what I have what I believe to be true. Uh, I'm only telling you things as I believe them to be true wholeheartedly, which if you follow me, you know, that's just how I am anyway. Um, but if there are any additional questions, I will be having team members for apex fusion on this channel interviewing them and i'm going to be doing that live so if there are questions or you want clarification on something make sure you come to any of the live um apex fusion interviews and you'll be able to ask them and i will address them as best i can um evm wave one then you've got two percent to wave two and two percent to wave three you've got an eight percent allocation to airdrops these are all tokens that are basically going to be freely distributed to uh to, to the users of other blockchains that this blockchain is ultimately working on bringing together through bridging um and evms and all that you've got staking rewards 20 percent these the 20 percent staking rewards which is this big orange pie here that's basically for nodes you know there there needs to be some sort of yield that staking node operators are being able to benefit from as the ecosystem is being built it's really all there is to it and so a lot of these staking rewards the early staking rewards until the ecosystem has come to fruition and and has been able to stabilize itself this is very similar to what cardano did when they first launched staking 
they controlled a lot of the early nodes as people continued to pile in and start their own nodes. And then they would delegate, they would change up their delegation from their own nodes, and then they would reallocate those or redelegate um, their tokens to other nodes outside of their own control until there were no more. And it was all just the public. It was just all nodes out in the world, if you if you remember correctly. And that's something similar that, that's what's going on here. And that's what that allocation is for, to ensure that that is beneficial to everybody. Um, and that's it. And then you've got investors, 10% to investors. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. 10% allocation to investors with only 3% being pre-launch, 7% post-launch. So you basically got 3% of the tokens uh, ultimately going to like basically seed round investors, the very early ad uh, investors and adopters of the tech um, before they even really had much of anything. I would say that's fair, okay? Now you've got token distribution by purpose, okay? Uh, I mean, this is all very similar, but it's breaking down even further, the numbers. Uh, community and ecosystem development. 58.33%. So over half of the tokens are basically going towards benefiting the economy, uh, the airdrops, the grants, the venture funding, all of that stuff. 58.33% is going ultimately to the community in one way, shape, or form. What is there to complain about there? Uh, contributors, 13.67%. Core contributors, Early contributors, 3%, and 0.67 for advisors. Personally, I think 0.67 is not, isn't that much, but oh well, I'm not an advisor, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then you've got 10% to investors, you got the pre-launch, post-launch, and then operations. 18% is basically being utilized by the team. Uh, you've got teams, labs ops, and foundation ops. Folks, tell me how this is wrong. Tell me in the comments what you see that is wrong, not based off of assumptions or the cynicism of previous projects that have come over the last, you know, seven years. Um, but but really compare these tokenomics to a lot of the other p p successful or even not so successful <clears throat> Compare these to successful projects that weren't that greedy in their tokenomics, as so many would say, uh, and compare them to the uh, tokenomics of failed projects. How well planned and thought out and how transparent are those tokenomics? I'd love to know. Circulating supply refers to every Apex token that is not subject to a lockup period at a given time. With the exception of the ecosystem incentives, airdrops, staking rewards, and grants. The majority of the supply of Apex tokens are subject to long-term lockups. The unlock schedule is linear across the board. Basically saying there are no secrets about the lockups. You're gonna know the whole schedule. It's all laid out and it's not going anywhere. Foundation. This is defining what the foundation means. The Apex Foundation, as the network steward enabling the Genesis block, manages an important allocation of tokens. Apex reputation system inputs will be used to support ecosystem growth. Through the infusion program, a portion of the tokens will be used for strategic delegations to the ecosystem across various staking pools to decentralize the network further. Additionally, the foundation will provide direct grants to teams and projects that contribute to ecosystem level development in various areas. Ecosystem level development ultimately meeting not just, you know, funny little like uh, kitten NFT collections or like, you know, silly, like projects like that, but real projects that are going to help further expand and, and build upon the ecosystem overall. Okay. Real significant use cases. They're willing to help back those types of projects. Okay. Um, and then this goes further into, uh, you know, the different, the different decentralized labs. Labs, which will house the Apex Fusion core contributors, serve as the operational hub and provide essential substance for bootstrapping the network. These cross-disciplinary teams based in multiple independent entities or participating in individuals contribute to Apex Fusion in a decentralized way. 
to promote sustainable growth and innovation, developing blockchain protocols through collaboration among independent actors offers distinct advantages over relying solely on a single monolithic development company. This is one of the things that I love so much about what they're doing. This is one of the reasons why I've been so excited and we're, 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 we're more than halfway through for those of you that are watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, how deep are we going? We're going deep, but we're, we're, we're halfway through already. Um, but I like the fact that they don't just have one or two big development partners that they're basically touting around to legitimize themselves. They're actively building something. And here's the thing that people just don't understand. This isn't just an idea and a white paper and a bunch of stuff thrown around to try and, and, and get a bunch of cash from people really quick as we're, you know, hyping it and FOMOing it and all this other garbage, okay? There are significant development members from IOG, Polygon, Bitcoin, Ethereum as part of this project, okay? This is not just some random project idea. This has been in development now for years and, and, and it's been a secret to me up until fairly recently. And they very easily could have came to me. Like when, when I have the, the founder on and he tells his story, okay, you guys are gonna realize that he could have reached out to me a long time ago and said, hey, I, I'm building this. I I'm, I would love to have you on board. Here's why. You know, I'm familiar with you. Whatever. I'll let him tell his story. But but ultimately, I could have been a part of this a long time ago. They didn't do that. They didn't reach out to me and say, "Hey, we've got this thing. We want you to pump the shit out of it. We're gonna make some quick cash." It wasn't anything like that. They waited. I, as a matter of fact, I reached out to them first. I didn't even know this thing existed until Charles told me about it, and I started doing some digging, and I reached out to them. It just so happened the founder knew exactly who I was and was very excited to tell me what they've been building for years and he put millions of dollars into okay so this is not a uh you know i saw a comment recently uh about like how, how do we know that this is legitimate here you know all, all of that and um i think people are going to realize real quick that this is not some flash in the pan idea this is a legitimate uh a legitimate layer one which is the only reason why i'm bullish on it if i thought for any second that this was not a legitimate project, um, I wouldn't have any part of it. I'm just so at risk and so disgusted by the majority of crypto projects today, I simply don't touch them. I just don't care. I see a lot of the other YouTubers out there and they're talking about this, oh, this is gonna thousand X, this is gonna hundred X and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, you know what? I've been through this now multiple cycles and the majority of that, this is gonna thousand X bullshit for the uh, the, the titles in the, in the flash to draw in a lot of the D-Gen retail market that don't know any better. A lot of these projects are gonna tank and they're not gonna go anywhere. I'm just being straight up. Some people may make some money, but the majority of people aren't even gonna know when to get out of these projects. So what we're seeing is a lot of hype built around what projects a lot of the YouTubers believe may very well do well, but they're already in. And you know, chances are they're gonna know when to sell before the rest of the market does. And there's gonna be a lot of bag holders. So for me, I like talking about projects that I believe are gonna stand the test of the next bear cycle. Because if I talk about a project, I'm talking about a project knowing full well that a lot of newcomers to my channel or the crypto space overall may very well buy and accumulate some of these tokens, not know when to sell and be holding on to them as the market is tanking and they're basically holding on to them throughout the next bear cycle. Which ones are gonna continue working and building and expanding their ecosystem, expanding their development partners and just continuing to build ultimately in the bear market, ready to basically kick things off to new levels and new heights in the next run and that's what that that is what my risk aversion is um and and it's one of the reasons why i absolutely do like uh, apex fusion i mean just for the record that those are my honest thoughts infusion funding the foundation allocates 13.3 percent of its apex supply to qualified staking pools the infusion program, originally inspired by the ISPO or initial stake pool offering mechanism, is an innovative way of funding with Apex tokens. The foundation has a significant alloc allocation of tokens for this purpose, which functionally serve as perpetual ISPO tokens. These tokens can be delegated but not sold and are deployed in various purpose-built stake pools for on-chain development upon approval by the foundation. By setting very high stake pool operation fees, 
SPOs keep rewards from block production. Pool rewards from inflation and fees will be paid out at the end of each epoch. They are directly correlated with the amount of tokens delegated. Recipient projects will keep and deploy those tokens to achieve their purpose. This way, project teams or stake pool owners gradually receive funding to meet their goals. If a project is completed or put on hold, funding is diverted to the next in queue, according to foundation guidelines. Basically, it's all just goes back to if you're not building, you're not getting paid. I love that. I absolutely love that because to be real honest with you, I see so many projects on Cardano and if I go to like Cardano cube and, and I'm not trying to dump on Cardano and no, I'm not saying like, oh, I love Apex more than Cardano. That's not what I'm doing here, but this is gonna be one of my second largest holdings to Cardano and, and that that is true. Uh, when, it, when it launches, when I'm able to get my hands on tokens, obviously I'm sure they're gonna be locked up somehow uh, unless I'm able to, if I'm able to get some earlier, uh, if not, which I, I don't know, we'll see. I really, I'm not 100% sure what to expect. I don't have anything. Um, but when I look at like Cardano cube and, and I, and I look at all of the projects listed there, I was trying to, to, to figure out which ones were still active, which ones were still in existence, which ones were still in development. And I feel like there are just way too many of them um, that weren't. Now, granted, they weren't getting funding from Cardano, so it doesn't really matter. They're just ideas. People were starting on them. Maybe they weren't getting adoption or they weren't, whatever the issues were. Um, but, you know, I, I, I like the way that this is structured. Infusion has the following advantages over grants and traditional ISPOs. Funding is per perpetual rather than one-off. I love that too. I will say that this to some extent is similar to Project Catalyst um, it, with the exception of with Project Catalyst, if you, let's, let's say you need $100,000 to basically finish your project or to build out an idea, then ultimately the best way of going about that is to try and get like 25,000 each Project Catalyst round um, rather than to try and get it all at once. And so people have learned that that's basically the best way of trying to achieve getting funding through Project Catalyst is by breaking it down into phases um, and, and then having a much better, uh, a, a better means of, of getting some of that allocation rather than going high saying, well, this is everything I need to build this project. And then you missing out because there, there weren't enough funds in that allocation or whatever. Recipients get continual trickle funding proportional to the stake rather than lump sums. Development progress transparently correlates to reward flow. On-chain tracking allows community input on recipient quality. The foundation can pull the delegation if milestones are not met. I mean, there are just so many safeguards ultimately to ensure that it's a, this is quality over quantity. Grants, this category represents grants. 2.33% of the total supply that will be awarded through an application process that assesses factors like technical merit, team capabilities, projected impact, and community benefit. Ultimately, the grant, I'm gonna be very interested in checking out um, projects that do get, pro, uh, I'm hoping that they announce this as they approve grant funding for applications because basically they're gonna be doing a lot of our due diligence for us as re retail and speculative investors. So if they're already going through and see what they're saying, okay, well, the team qualifies, uh, their technical merit is sound. Yeah, we'll give them some of our funding so that they can build this. That tells me that when they are willing to invest in, uh, in a project, they've done the due diligence for me so I don't have to spend as many countless hours trying to research who these people are, what they've done in the past, whether or not I think that they're gonna build something all the way from start to finish. Uh, it looks like the team's ultimately gonna be doing a lot of that for me, so that, that'll be helpful. Larger grants may vest across milestones with partial upfront funding and the remainder unlocking on delivery. Funding via infusion will be pr the, a preferred method for incentivizing ecosystem growth. And then the venture fund. Venture fund, 8% of the total Apex token supply is an integral component of pro promoting innovation within the blockchain sphere. This fund will be expressly designed to invest in and cultivate promising startups and innovative projects that align with the Apex Fusion vision, contributing significantly to the ecosystem. And I was seeing comments talking about, oh, 8% to venture capitalists. No, people, you have to read.
<laughs> I just saw I just saw Charles do a video recently. He said reading is hard. I mean, it, like, listen, folks, and I, I want to make this abundantly clear. So I'm gonna make my face real big so you see my little fat face. Um, here's here's the thing. So many people in the retail crypto market are looking at YouTubers and influencers for their like their investment guidance. What projects are worth it? I, I might find a project and I want to see somebody else talking about it. and I want them to agree with me because I want to feel good about it. I want to feel like I'm really going to make a lot of money with this. But the problem is, and this is one of the main reasons why we tell everybody, do your own research. Maybe you don't fully understand everything you're reading today. Maybe you don't fully understand blockchain technology yet, and you don't understand all of the terminology associated with it. None of us did until we started reading, okay? We don't tell everybody to do your own research because we don't feel like doing it. Obviously, we do it. But as I always say, I'm always right sometimes, and I can't guarantee the outcome of any project that I like. Not Apex Fusion, not Celsius Network, not Cardano. I can't do that. I'm not a magic man and I don't have a crystal ball. But what I can do is give myself a much more educated guess as to what I think is gonna be the outcome of something over the majority of people that watch my channel and other people's channels but it doesn't have to be that way. I have a lot of really smart viewers that watch my channel. Many of you actually are very, very bright when it comes to crypto. And sometimes you guys teach me new interesting and cool things that I didn't, that maybe I overlooked or that I didn't consider. And so, and the thing of it is, is I'm pretty confident in the idea that I probably got you started in crypto to begin with. You just got really, really smart about it because you did your own research. And while you're looking and learning about this project or another project out here, I'm focusing on this thing or another thing over here. And we bring our knowledge together as a community. And that is ultimately what community is about. And one of the big things that I like a lot about Apex Fusion is the idea that it's trying to bridge the gap in all of the tribalism of multiple blockchains in our space. Because if there's one thing that we know about tribalism and we, the, the one thing that we know about the division is that through division, it keeps all of us separate, not communicating with each other in intelligible ways, not being able to benefit from each other's favorite projects in, in positive ways. And that is ultimately what we need to do do, especially if we're here to try and fight in any way a more centralized system of control that's ultimately going to be pushed on us. We have to get along. We have to be able to coincide, work together, and benefit one another's favorite blockchains, regardless of differences of opinion or differences in technology or whatnot. And that's ultimately one of the reasons why I look at Apex Fusion as being that one project that I think can legitimately bring so many people that are currently divided in the space, whether it's Cardano versus Ethereum or, or Polygon versus uh, Bitcoin or like whatever these narratives are that, that these main, main like, uh, gosh, what's the word I'm looking at? These maxis, right? I, I know a lot of people think I'm a Cardano maxi and I never have been. I've always been open. My mind has always been open to the idea of new, better, cool, more functional technology. There just hasn't been. And I'm sorry to say that in my opinion, I believe Cardano is number one. And I believe that it ultimately, once it meets its full milestone, its full roadmap, once full Terra is concluded and everything is truly decentralized on the blockchain, transparent for all, and we're instituting this technology for real democracy, real voting, whether it's in US states as they've been working on or different countries or whatever, I believe that projects like Apex Fusion take that to the next level, utilizing similar technology for exactly those reasons, to try and keep everything transparent, fair and functional, and, and, all, and, and that's it. But you have to do your own research so that you can understand a lot of this stuff without having to rely on the opinions of others that you may ultimately disagree with fully had you read it yourself. I know that was a very long-winded thing, and I'm sorry, we're 48 minutes in. Um, but ultimately, you know, the, the rest of this paper basically just breaks down the meanings behind all of the different slices of pie in those tokenomics, what it means in detail. And folks, it's not bad. It's pretty damn good, if you ask me. And I like where a lot of this stuff is pointing and going. The initial airdrop. The initial airdrop occurs after the mainnet launch with two subsequent airdrops planned. The first airdrops consist of 120 million Apex tokens. 
exact timestamps for snapshots for each airdrop will be published after the snapshot has been executed to disincentivize gaming of the process, disincentivize, sorry, gaming of the process and provide full transparency for the allocation. Basically what they mean by that is, what happens anytime there's a, a coming airdrop? Everybody runs out just to buy that token to get the free tokens and then you turn right around and sell the main token on the market again. And they're gaming the system. That's not what they're doing. For all we know, they've already taken these screenshots, these snapshot shots. I don't know. I, I truly don't know. But based off of reading that, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, let's see. Okay, so exact timestamps for snapshots for each airdrop will be published after the snapshot has been executed. Okay, so basically they're saying they're not going to tell you when, they're just going to do them and then tell you when they did it. I like that. I think that's actually cool as hell. And for long-term Cardano holders uh, and and, the, and supporters of a lot of these other blockchains that we, we're, we're there because we believe we're there because we are passionate about what they're building and what they've been doing and all that, we're gonna be rewarded for that. Not just flash in the pan, fair weather holders that are just gonna go speculate on the token just to get some free stuff and then dump the tokens on the market causing panic in people, that's bullshit. The initial 120 million token airdrop will be dis distributed to users on the Cardano, EVM, and potentially future fusion chains, as these chains are technologically related to Apex Fusion's development and ecosystem. Basically, they're throwing all the Cardano people a bone, and they're saying, you know what, Cardano's the reason we're here, your support of Cardano is what brought us here, we're, we're throwing you guys a bone. I mean, bravo, man, bravo. And this isn't like, this isn't, and here, you know, this is another funny point. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I see other blockchains that their entire, it's almost as if their entire value proposition for existing in the first place is airdrops for tokens by which like an insanely high percentage of them are gone within a matter of a few months already anyway. And, and it's it's nonsensical to me, um, but there's always a new airdrop. There's always a new shit coin ready to drop on the heads of everybody that just holds this big bull token. And that's if it works, um, then, then maybe you'll get some free stuff. But that free stuff is generally not worth squat. Um, and ultimately, you know, it, it, this is a legitimate airdrop, in my opinion. Um but it is what it is. It is important to note that airdrop participation is based on users' eligibility and the active agreement to participate in the airdrop signed through a user's wallet. Once a user is determined eligible for any Apex token airdrops, they must confirm through a simple on-chain transaction that they agree and wish to participate in the airdrop. And my guess is this is for compliance. This is for compliance. Now, the one thing that I'm gonna point out to people, and I want, I'm curious, and I'm gonna have to talk to the team about how they plan on, on fighting this, is you know as well as I do, that there are gonna be a lot of imposters out there trying to pretend that if you want your Apex Fusion airdrop, you're gonna have to sign this smart contract, you're gonna have to do this and do that, and they're probably gonna try and fake uh, the website and fake everything to try and goat you into basically clicking approve, and they're gonna start draining wallets. And so, <clears throat> because we've seen that time and time and time again. So I'm curious to figure out like, what is the team gonna do to try and prevent that kind of thing from happening? They need to make all of this stuff abundantly clear and very much public. And of course, I'm gonna be covering it and I'm sure many others will as well. If confirmation is not done within a specific time frame, the user will lose rights to the airdrop and their allocation will fall into the subsequent airdrop bucket. Legal constraints will be taken into account when implementing airdrop participation within various jurisdictions. Details will be published before the airdrop event. So, you know, I would even encourage like uh, team members to either come on my channel live or other um, notable channels uh, in the ecosystem or in the space and make these announcements. Um, 
and let them and let them go through because too much otherwise it's too easy to like scam uh people like for impersonators and things like that to scam a lot of this stuff so that that's one thing that's actually kept me away from a lot of airdrops is i just i i never know uh you, you see all kinds of fake marketing on twitter and everywhere else on fake accounts that are all bot loaded with people to make them look legitimate and so forth and so on i mean these hackers and and scammers will stop at nothing so this is something i'm definitely going to dive deeper into to, as to exactly how this is going to be announced and how everybody's going to be kept in the loop contributors this is what i thought was important the 13.6 percent token allocation is reserved reserved for the contributors consisting of core contributors early contributors and other stakeholders and participants who help build the project apex fusion has had multiple individuals and entities contributing from the beginning the initial design always assumed in cross-disciplinary approach and multiple entities doing core development in a decentralized way. The 16% token allocation reserved for contributors is divided into the following categories. You've got uh, core contributors, early contributors, and the foundation allocation for advisors and team members will be 0.67%. Folks, none of this is out. I mean, none, none of this is... Um, uh, I'm hoping that this really helps spell things out for everybody uh, and makes it easier for people to understand the value proposition here. And, and that I'm hoping, I'm genuinely wholeheartedly hoping that all of this information helps thwart a lot of the initial concerns from just the light paper breakdowns of things. I know that some of that information was limited and it was very much open for speculation and, and a lot of cynicism, but I'm hoping that this turns that around. And I'm hoping that a lot of the people that spoke very openly and very quickly rather about how adamantly against the, the, the tokenomics they were without having all of the details in place, I'm hoping a lot of them turn around publicly and announce as much as well, because I just think that's the honorable thing to do in my opinion the unlock schedule this is a big deal okay and i might conclude this here we're, we're getting i mean we're at page 21 out of 30 and if i have to i'll, I'll scroll through a little bit and see if there are any more fine nuggets that we might need to cover uh but here we are at an hour and i think i've covered the bulk of of what i think is really important to people but this is definitely a big one the unlock schedule Various Apex token allocations will be subject to lockup schedules to encourage long-term alignment. And then we've got a color chart that I'm going to show once I'm done reading this. Unlocked portions include allotments to team members, advisors, and investors in keeping with industry standards. Lockup, restri lockup restricts access to tokens over time through gradual linear release. This prevents short-term thinking and sudden impacts on circulating supply. Basically, it's all structured to make sure that people that were either getting in early or buying early allocations or whatever the case may have been, aren't able to just dump on the market when everything goes live. That's it. You've got 12 months, 24 month, 36 month, and 48 month, and then basically you got three years. And you've got staking rewards that basically peter. You've got operations. I mean, all of these are basically broken down in time frames. And then you've got basically the amount of tokens that are hitting the ecosystem over that period of time. And it's all self-explanatory there. The bulk of it is going to be, you know, all of it, you know, by the third year, everything should be out in the market. OK, uh, the Apex Apex lockup schedule consists of pre-seed investors will have a one year linear distribution with no cliff. Seed investors will have a three year linear distribution with no cliff and the team and other stakeholders will have a three year linear unlock period. The team's locked up for three years, folks. Linear token release over the unlock period to provide reasonable liquidity access without volatility risk. No accelerated unlock release if an agreement ends prematurely for extenuating reasons. This approach balances incentive alignment with reasonable liquidity, encouraging stakeholders to focus on Apex Fusion's long-term growth and adoption. Basically, these tokens ain't gonna be worth shit if the team is more worried about when they can dump their tokens on the public than building and bettering it. And that is the way it should be, period. And I would hope everyone out there would agree. 
fees and mechanics which we all pretty much know um you've got l1s l2s and the reactor bridge you've got a lot of stuff which we're going to cover more in the full white paper um you know gas fee computation which you know i'm not a math wizard so i'll let you figure that out on your own or maybe uh benjamin cowan can go over it with his phd how's that apex fusion prime chain fee structure provides multiple benefits to the ecosystem structural simplicity fee volatility mitigation the gas fee structure compared to a chain like ethereum deters deters potential exponential increases in fees due to network activity keeping fees stable and predictable given the predetermined parameters i freaking love that the fees fees for a blockchain should not go up and down based on bloat. It just shouldn't. I, I think it should, uh, that's the way it should be. Fair distribution. Since fees on Prime go directly to block producers, adopting a similar fee distribution mechanism promotes decentralization and ensures fees are shared among participants, contributing to network security and operation. Attack prevention. This is a key element you don't see mentioned often. Prime's fee structure compensates for transaction processing and storage costs and discourages economic attacks. By ensuring that fees cover the expenses, it becomes less attractive for malicious actors to exploit the system for economic gain. Also, a higher static fee structure on the Prime chain increases security significantly. These are all things that you get from, uh, th from pros in the field, man. These are all the kinds of little notes and things to look out for and to build around. Of, of other significant blockchains like Polygon, Cardano, and the like. That's this is this is what happens when people learn and then they go to other they go to new projects, new layer ones, and implement what they learned previously. And and that's one of the big values that I see with Apex Fusion and the way that they're building out. Staking fundamentals, you can go over that stuff. I mean, we're pretty used to seeing a lot of this stuff already. Initial APY and staking limits. Inflation for Apex staking rewards will initially start from 10% at launch with a half-life of three years, slowly decreasing after each five-day epoch. Rewards will only be issued on the prime chain. Projected APY is theoretical and depends on many parameters, such as the percentage of tokens staked. And I think, there it is, okay. I don't know what's happening, but it kind of like my uh, thing is locking up on me a little bit. Well, at least you get a little bit of a view of this APY for Apex staking. Ultimately, it'll start at 10 um, and, and work itself down over a period of 10 years, which I think that's pretty cool. I don't know why this is acting all wonky on me for some reason. All right, here we go. Given the half-life of three years, the following formula could be applied to calculate APY for Apex, Apex staking in a given time frame after lunch lunch I, I have food on the brain for some reason i'm starting to get sloppy um i don't understand a lot of these numbers i'm just some internet on the or some some old guy on the internet any math wizards you defy cows out there that <laughs> like this is you know you check this stuff out and let me know what you guys think um i'm half joking i just it's this is like crazy stuff um Therefore, based on this initial APY and a half-life of three years with a decreasing APY after each five-day epoch, the APY after six months should be 9.54%. After one year, 9.25%. After two years, 722 and so on. It basically drops over time. And, and ultimately, it's going to drop over time as more adoption and more nodes come, come, come to fruition and, and you know all of that. It all makes perfect sense to me. Projected staking ratio, and now this is interesting because it shows uh, all of the different like stake tokens that they that a lot of other blockchains started with and what they're doing in comparison, which I think that's kind of cool. To better assess potential staking projections, the current staking ratio for the most prominent chains are presented. As the table of data from quarter uh, from 2023 quarter three shows, staking ratios vary dramatically across chains, ranging anywhere from 19% all the way to 85%. <clears throat> staking projections could be made according to a combination of two factors for Apex, the association with Cardano and a look into nascent proof of stake chains. You can see all the numbers right down here on the right. Okay. Cardano has a staking ratio of around 62%, whereas some of the newer chains on the list, Sui and Aptos, range between 81 and 
It is also relevant to look at the newer chains since attractiveness, given higher staking rewards, should be higher on more nascent chains as exemplified by the staking ratios. We believe the staking ratio will start off high at around 65% and stay high because of the incentive structures presented. Uh, you've got initial staking projections that all look really good. I mean, this is all this is all good stuff, man. I mean, this is all good, but this we're basically at the end and then you have the disclaimer. So let me know what you guys think now. What do you guys genuinely think about the Apex Fusion tokenomics? Are you in, are you out? Are you waiting for more information? Are you waiting for the white paper to fully launch with all the kit and caboodle bells and whistles and everything associated with it? I'm actually personally excited about it. I am not seeing a full white paper yet personally. I'm looking forward to when I do and I have a chance to deep dive into it and really make sense of a lot of what's going on in the space because you know, there's a lot of cool stuff in the light paper overall, um, but I love sitting down with a big fat cup of coffee and just reading a bunch of technical boring shit for hours on end in a white paper so that you don't have to. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I, I actually don't like doing it most of the time. Uh, but when there's an app, uh, when there's a project that I'm actually genuinely interested in, then I will read through the whole thing. Uh, even if it takes several naps in the meantime. So anyway, listen, folks, I appreciate everybody's interest in Apex, and I appreciate that there are a lot of members of the Cardano community um, that have taken an interest in Apex Fusion. Uh, even if it's some of the initial response to the tokenomics weren't the best, hopefully this really sheds a light on what's coming and how things are really broken down and the meaningfulness of a lot of those slices in that big grand pie. We're at a, an hour-long video breaking a lot of this stuff down. Hopefully, I did you guys a service um and you'll like that uh button and maybe you'll even subscribe if you're new here but this is how we roll here in crow's nest land and the crypto crow i just call it as i see it it is what it is and i'm always right sometimes so until next time guys and gals thanks for joining me and until next time crow your coins and i'll see you again soon